standing on the Word of God and what Jesus has said. Of course, His words are the ins under inspiration like the prophet's words are under inspiration. And so those words are what the structure of your life must be standing on. Otherwise, the storm's going to come along and you're going to fall. And so the structure has to be grounded in this. And I think, that's, thank, thank God for the Apostle John there. Let me go to, uh, uh, let's go to John chapter 9. Is it John 9 or Luke? Let's see. Yeah, no, no, no. Mark 9. I'm sorry. Mark 9. Mark 9. There's a lot of overlapping and, and repeating of statements. And because the authors in doing the Gospels, you know, they um, probably had a hold of a copy of Mark's uh, Gospel. Okay, Mark 9, 31, 30 and 31, yeah, here it is. Again, we're back here. They departed from there and passed through Galilee, and he did not want anyone to know it, for he taught his disciples and said to them. So this is like some private time with the disciples, and this is a repetition of what we've already said. The Son of Man is betrayed, Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of men, they will kill him, and after he is killed, he will rise the third day. And they did not understand the saying and were afraid to ask him. And the, the point, the reason I repeated that, because I want to uh, emphasize this point. He must rise from the dead. He must. Jesus had to rise from the dead. It was impossible that death could hold him. Had he been just a man or another prophet, then we could congratulate Peter for rebuking him and trying to stop it. But since Holy Scripture cannot be broken, cannot be broken, then it's right to say to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You with me? He must rise from the dead. Now, when we get, when we get to uh, out of the Gospels and into uh, Paul's letters, we, um, like for instance, 1 Corinthians uh, uh, 15. 1 Corinthians 15. This was our text today that we read together. That was read to us during the service. Paul says of this, now I want you to see, um, yeah, moreover brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, also you receive, and in which you stand. By which also you are saved, if you hold fast to the word which I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered you, delivered to you, first of all. Now, I think it's the NIV, the, you guys that have the NIV, of first importance. It's that which is most important of all. That which is most important. I delivered you first of all that which I also received. The apostles say, and basically, here's what he has based his life upon Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He was seen by Cephas, and that's where all the witnesses are here. In that passage, it talks about all of these people that were eyewitnesses to the resurrected Jesus. In this passage, okay? Now, he calls this of first importance. 
We have no Christianity apart from the resurrection of Jesus. None. We have a religion that becomes hollow. Without power. With the resurrection of Christ comes the power of God. The confirmation that what Jesus had said was true. His miracles are real. If we can believe the resurrection, there's not a miracle in the Bible we should deny. Because of the amazing event of the resurrection of Jesus. In 1 Corinthians 15, go to verse 14. If Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. That's verse 14. Yes, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that He raised up Christ whom He did not raise up if in fact the dead do not rise. Paul connects the idea of the resurrection to Jesus of Jesus to the doctrine of the, the resurrection of the saints, those that believe. He connects it all together and that our resurrection depends on it. That's why I say He must rise from the dead. Our resurrection depends on the resurrection of Jesus. If He is alive, we too shall live. <laughs> Hallelujah. We will. There's a certainty in it. Verse 15, I think I read. 15, 17, go to 17. If Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. It's useless. You are still in your sins. That means you have no hope of forgiveness of sins. You're still in your sins if Christ is not risen. That's why the Bible tells us that, that we have to confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God has raised Him from the dead in order to be saved. We have to believe this. There is no salvation apart from believing Jesus has been raised from the dead. <coughs> it's not like, well, I don't agree with this thing in the Bible or I don't know if this is true. So it's not like that. It's like this is the foundation stone. If we're off the foundation stone, there's no hope of salvation. That is a denial of God and denial of God's truth at the highest, most highest level. And that is to reject the resurrection of Jesus. Now, I found some notes in the uh, footnotes in the uh, life application Bible. I thought were really helpful, and I, I'm hoping this will be a good way to close the message today. Since Jesus rose from the dead, okay, one, we can be confident that Jesus will accomplish all He has promised. Since he's raised from the dead. What are some things Jesus has promised? What are some things Jesus has promised you? What about his peace? My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives. I give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. What about his promise? In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. What about his promise? I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. He that lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? John 11. What about his promises? Come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. What about His promises? We can be confident He will accomplish all He has promised. Second, His bodily resurrection shows that He is the living Christ. He's the ruler of God's kingdom. The Romans 1 passage says that through the resurrection, God has declared Jesus to be the Son of God. Well, we knew it from the incarnation. We, we knew that Emmanuel was with us. But the declaration in the gospel 
is that through the resurrection, that's the beginning of the, uh, Paul's, Paul's gospel, Romans 1 verse 4. So it's not a false prophet. It's not an imposter. He's not just among the prophets. He's not just one of them. Not John the Baptist. Not Elijah. Like was said to, to him that the people thought about him. But he was, as Peter had confessed, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And it would be declared and announced through the resurrection from the dead. Thirdly, we can be certain of our own resurrection since Jesus was resurrected. And that's what, that's what 1 Corinthians 15 is about too. All about the resurrection. Spend some time reading that. Death is not the end. For the believer, there is a future life. Amen? Amen. There is. I mean, there is. We're just passing through, right? We're going to go over the threshold, all of us. We'll go right over the threshold through the door into the heavenly kingdom. Those that believe in Jesus Christ. We can be certain of our own resurrection. We may not understand what's going to happen. All those things, details that need to come together that, that we'll understand one day. But we can be certain of this. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. Fourth, the same power that raised Jesus is available to change your life. One of the, one of the arguments that non-believers and skeptics have against Christianity is the, the terrible examples that Christians can be. We have to own up to that. We don't always say the things we should say. We don't do the things we should do. We don't always act like we love God or know God. Our lives sometimes are a total disaster. And the world is watching on. That does not diminish this truth. It does not. The same power that raised Jesus is available to change your life. The Bible tells us that if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature, a new creation, a new person. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. So if you're a Christian putting on a show, claiming to be a Christian, putting on a show, stop your foolishness, repent of your sin, and turn to the living God. Let's close with this one. The resurrection is the basis of the church's witness in the world. Jesus said before he gave the, what we call the Great Commission, all authority has been given to me, all power and authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Go, make disciples. The resurrection is the basis of the church's witness in the world. When we take the resurrection out of the, out of the picture, there is no witness in the world. The reason the church is living today after centuries of intense, fierce persecution to destroy it is because we have a living Savior. That's the truth. Go to the Middle East where some of the Christian communities have been tried to, they've tried to extinguish them and the church is rising up again. Hallelujah. Why? How is it possible? The strong will of these people. Oh, they're such good people committed to their religion. No. It's there is a living Christ. Let's pray together. Oh, Lord Jesus, we come to you, head of the church, loving Lord. You've been so patient with us, your grace, your mercy, your long suffering and patience. Lord, we've been weak and miserable. 
much like the disciples when times get tough, we turn our backs on you. Maybe spoke the way we shouldn't or even denied you. Lord, please have mercy. Forgive us, Lord. Lord, I pray for the enemies of the gospel, the enemies of the truth. They're really enemies of God. We pray for them. Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus that you might revive your church. There will be those that truly believe we serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. Lord, we love you and praise you. Thank you that we could come here today and worship. I pray if there's any here today that need to turn to you, that they'll do that. Father, enable them to turn to you with all their heart and mind. Lord, if we can in any way just pretending, bring us to repentance. Maybe there's some that have said, I didn't realize he was really alive today. May they be able to confess Jesus is alive. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>